their good friend suddenly sick. Stage four is bad. It is, yes. So you all jumped into action to help her. We did. We did, yeah. But tonight, we take a closer look at a Tualatin woman diagnosed with cancer. Our Dan Tilkin is here now with how those generous friends say they feel burned. Burned because they believe they caught her in a lie. We also learned through this police report right here, the district attorney is not going to prosecute her. Did, uh, Jill Hand. She had, uh, for lack of a better word, a pre-chemo party. And Elsa Dobson. She got her head shaved in front of all of us. We're both there that day in Eugene. It was just really heartbreaking that, you know, she had this beautiful, long, blonde hair. And everybody was being positive, but there were a lot of tears shed. It was May of 2014, and their good friend and fellow single mom, Jennifer Gaskin, was in a tough spot. Initially, it looked fairly treatable, and then they found out it was the medullary thyroid cancer, and that was a terminal illness. Her doctor said, you know, there was nothing else they could do, that she might as well just, you know, get off the chemo at that point and just enjoy life to the fullest. A death sentence? Yes. Jill launched this GoFundMe account. The friends cooked meals. They got this Eugene pizza parlor to host a fundraiser. They went to Camas, where K&M Drive-In did this fundraiser, which Jennifer attended with her son and daughter. Well, soon, they got good news. The GoFundMe page passed the friend's $10,000 goal, so Jennifer wouldn't have to work at a nursing assistant job during her chemotherapy. But then, the news got confusing. Things were vague and a little bit inconsistent as far as if she was getting worse, it wasn't helping, it was helping. She says that, you know, they were barely making ends meet, so that's why we did all this fundraising. She put some of it towards the purchase of a used vehicle for her daughter. And then all of a sudden, her son is getting braces. When I started getting uh, contacts through the GoFundMe account, because I was the administrator, with people questioning uh, whether or not she really was sick, strangers, uh, I started to pay a little bit closer attention. Jill asked you Eugene police to investigate. By then, Jennifer Gaskin remarried and moved. The Eugene detective drove to her new home in Tualatin, where he wrote in his police report she told him she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and received oral chemotherapy. She said she was treated at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute. She also says she went to Providence Hospital in Portland, insured through the Oregon Health Plan. And she said she got treatment through Peace Health's hospital in Springfield. The detective went directly to those three hospitals and the state. They all told him the same thing, that they were unable to locate any records that Gaskin was a patient. How frustrated were you when the detective said, we're not going to prosecute? I was just shocked. Well, she's just going to get away with it. Recently, they learned Jennifer won't be prosecuted because the district attorney can't justify the expense. In the detective's words, the $10,000 from GoFundMe came from hundreds of people and small donations from all over the country. And there is a constitutional right of a person accused of a crime to be able to face their accusers in a trial. We do not have the ability to bring in people from across the country who made 20 to $50 donations. Well, I have the police report, which I would love to discuss with her. And Several weeks ago, I talked to Jennifer's husband, Mike Jenkins, who said he'd asked Jennifer if she'd speak with us. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, it's uh, Tuesday right now. The husband says he's going to let me know by 5 o'clock Friday whether she's going to speak with us. So we'll find out. We didn't, so I went to her house, and the person inside didn't come to the door. Days later, we went back and saw Jennifer talking to neighbors in the driveway. She went into her garage. Jennifer, I'm Dan Tilko with Channel 6. I want to talk to you about your claims you got cancer. You Mike? I am. Hey, we haven't heard back from you. Yeah, I'm actually working right now. Okay, we'd love to talk to you guys about the claims you've got cancer. Thanks. Please call us. You just feel burned. I do. We all loved and cared about her, and we don't want this happening to anybody else because she had everybody uh, here fooled. So in the police report, uh, it says a detective was only able to meet with her that one time at her house. Uh, it says he writes here uh, that she would not agree to additional interviews, and when he left messages for her, she never called him back. Mm.
And just to be clear, none of these hospitals that she told that she went to to the detectives have any record of her. I'll read a direct quote from the police detective. He says he couldn't find she was treated for cancer at any of the places she said she was. And you know how easy it is now with GoFundMe and the internet for people's emotions to say, I want to help. Everyone wants to help. And we heard from GoFundMe, and there's a statement on our website from them about this if you feel like you want your money back. Mm -hmm. All right, Dan. Good point. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.